Uh, now, I, I, uh, I want to show something from uh, one of your shows. I okay. think it happened last season. And yeah. then you tell me how I'm supposed to feel about this, all right? All right, just go ahead. This is from the Louis C.K. show. Hey, Letterman! I did it! What? Why am I always? <laughs> I didn't mean you. <laughs> no. <laughs> no this, this guy Jimmy Letterman. Oh, oh Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> what is the best advice you can give for like a student and like attitude when you're doing that? Because you kind of say a big F you to a lot of people, and I like that. <laughs> Say you mean at, was I like you, attitude when you're um, what attitude when you when you're have? yeah when you're in the production, which you've done it all and what what's the best attitude to really get the best attitude in production is really uh, uh, really wanting to help a lot, uh, really wanting to help whoever's show it is, uh, be really great. I mean just I mean I think that's anybody who's doing any job, yeah. really. She'd want that job to be done really well. I mean, this is a simple answer, but it's really true. Uh, there's one person really usually that has an idea of how to do something. And everybody else should really want... I mean, it's such a rare and great gift to get a job in show business. It's very, very... It's not... You're not going to get one. Uh, <laughs> I mean, statistically, you're, you're, you're not. So you're saying this is how you actually talk? I'm talking like my mama taught me to talk. And if you clown on my mom's, then you's about to get bounced. <laughs> okay, if that's how you really talk, then we ain't got a problem. Mm-hmm. Well, okay then. <laughs> I remember you weren't of this world to me. You were like a, I just had never seen anybody that looks like you, or talks I think I was like incredibly you. Average. You were like a like a alien who studied human behavior. <laughs> And got close, but didn't quite get there. <laughs> I don't believe in it. I don't believe in raising your kids rich right. is the worst thing you can do for them, or really more for the people that they're going to impact later in life. Yeah. Because yeah. there's no way somebody who's raised rich is not going to be a piece of human being. There's right. just no yeah. way. I mean, I, right. and I know, I know. I mean, if you're raised rich, if you get rich through work. That's but, okay. But yeah. if you were a kid that got, was given a Porsche when he was 17, right. That's what okay. are the chances, oh, he's so sage and cool, that guy yeah. who got a yeah. free sports car when he was a child. Yeah. Yeah. I don't believe, like, and, and it's why the world is a little messed up, because mm. until like a minute ago, historically, right. the rule was that if the king died, his kid got to run the country. That's the craziest <laughs> system. Yeah. Yeah. The king is dead, who of the whole nation? Can we count on to move us forward? <laughs> well, there's Copernicus. He's really smart. Nah. Let's see. The king's son is 17. He's been living in a castle and raping chambermaids for three years. <laughs> wow. <laughs> let's, help, let's let him run everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He drinks chocolate for dinner. Right. You know? Love it? Or do you hate it? No, like I, but he's bothering me so much. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a kid, I was bullied. But I was bigger. I was bigger and I was bullied. You're still bullied, even though you're bigger than kids. Bullied by littler kids than me. Like, oh no, this, this way. This is a flashback. And I was bigger. I could beat the <laughs> out of you. Right? I wish I could bring home more money. Hey. I was on a plane. I was going flying out to Los Angeles recently for a lot of important stuff, and I was in the in, in, sitting on a aisle seat with two, you know, with three seats. Next. It was like a very mm -hmm. crowded, stressful flight, and we're about to take off, and this woman gets on with her baby like this, mm. and her husband and two other just sad-looking kids, and she's just <laughs> walking through the plane, hating people with her baby. <laughs> She's so upset, and I saw her come, and I realized that she's sitting oh, here. Oh no! And I'm like, uh. So she comes up and she says, "Okay, here's how this is gonna work. Ah. This is all true." She goes, "You're sitting in the middle. I'm sitting in the aisle because I have a baby." Oh. And I thought, okay. <laughs> and I told her, "Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get off the plane." Just, just get off. So I got off the plane. True story. <laughs> 
I don't get why there's an FCC that can make those rules. I don't understand it. It doesn't jibe with what I understand about America and the First Amendment. It just doesn't make any sense to me. What? Yeah, but you want to let me finish? <laughs> but I, part of it was I wanted to cut out the middleman. That's an exciting idea. Yeah. I make a show. I put, I literally output it on my MacBook, and you watch it on your iPad. That was exciting to me. Yeah, sure. Um, but here's the thing: when you cut out the middleman, you deal with the customers directly. Are you really dealing with the customers? Well, I don't. Directly? I mean, I read some of the emails I get. And like one guy wrote to me after I was on the air for three weeks, and he said, "I'm still on the fence about trying your show." I don't know if I want to spend the five dollars, so can you write me an email and try to convince me to watch your show? And I'm like, you know, take your five dollars and shove it up your ass. <laughs> like I just got mad because I'll take an 11:30 p.m. nap. What? And go to bed at midnight. <laughs> oh, come on. Yes, because I don't take a nap because I need one. I, I I just love it's my favorite thing. You like it better than sleep? Better. It's, sleep is like the ultimate nap. You really, that's stupid you just said that. <laughs> that was a dumb thing to say. What are you talking that about? That was such a dumb thing to say. You know, kids are mean, and it's because they're trying it out. They, they, they look at a kid and they go, you're fat. And then they see the kid's face scrunch up and they go, ooh, that doesn't feel good to make a person do that. Right. But they, but they got to start with doing the mean thing. But when they write you're fat, then they just go, hmm, that was fun. I like that. <laughs> So, I think a lot of people don't do their job because they don't like their job. I don't get that. You know, like if you go to a, like a coffee place and the, and the kid looks at you like, uh. And I'm like, I didn't come to your house to ask you for coffee. I, it's a coffee place. <laughs> you work here. Your clothes match the building. I had a right to expect one. <laughs> and you're closer. <laughs> you know, you're closer to the coffee machine. I don't know why, and I need coffee. I don't know why someone wouldn't want their job to go really well. Right. And I, I think usually it's because they're 20. Because they're 20-year-old 20 20 yeah. douchebags that right, don't right, want right, to do... Right. I am prejudiced against 20-year-olds. Right, really? Yeah, okay. because 19, you're still your parents' fault. Right. 20, you're technically an adult, but you still haven't done anything. Right. Like, 20-year-olds at their jobs are always like, this job sucks. Yes, that's why we gave it to you. Right, right. That's right. That's right. Because you're 20. <laughs> you're 20 year olds old, you haven't done anything. You've never, you've just been sucking up resources. You've just been taking food and love and education and iPods and just taking it and judging it. Yeah, I like that, oh, that sucks. You're like a big orange on a tree that's rotting and the tree's like, get off, what? You know, she's like, where do I wanna go? Like you're hanging on. <laughs>
So I call 911 on my cell phone, and I go, uh, there's a guy chasing me with a gun, and he's trying to kill me, is what I said. And the lady goes, why is he doing that? <laughs> I swear to God, why is he doing that? I'm like, is there a reason he could have that you would not send anyone to help me? Like, if I tell her the story... Like, I'm gonna tell her the story, and she's gonna go, it sounds like you made a mess for yourself, we're not gonna get involved. <laughs> so I did the same thing anytime I call a company and I don't like what, you hang up, you call again. Right, right? get another person. Get another person. So I get another guy, he goes, uh, 911, what's your emergency? And I tell him, and helicopters show up right away. Helic I guess I just sound white enough to call in an airstrike. <laughs> I'm nervous. But, 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 but. <laughs> Sometimes people ask me for pictures, uh, and I don't like doing it. Well, no, why not? Well, I know you're just supposed to. You're supposed to go, oh, well, you know, the fans, but I just go, no, I don't want to do it. Right. <laughs> so it just makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. But one time, like, so I always try to be nice how I say no. I go, oh, you know, but thank you, sure. you know, okay. So I was coming out of a restaurant once, and these two women are standing there, and they, I hear them say, Pic picture, picture. Mm -hmm. So I go, oh, no, I'm sorry. I, I just don't like doing that. Right. I hope that's okay. Yeah, well, and they're like, reasonable. they're like, okay. And I said, what's your name, though? Mm. And she's like, Janet. And I go, hi, Janet, I'm Louie, hi. Hey, guys, I'm sorry, but thank you. Yeah. And then I walk away, and then I see the two women give their camera to some guy to take their picture. Yeah. With each other. <laughs> and so... <laughs> I just want to say I'm not trying to say that if you're white, you can't complain. Right. I'm just saying that if you're black, you get to complain more. Right, right. Because <laughs> you can't... There you go. No, no, don't tell the band that. <laughs> Because you can't, you can't, that's right. You can't take people's like historical context away from them. And right. everybody wants this to. Like white people are always like, come on, it wasn't us. Like they want black people to forget everything. Like every year, white people add a hundred years to how long ago slavery was. Yeah. I've heard educated white people say slavery was 400 years ago. <laughs> no, it very wasn't. Yeah. It was 140 years ago. That's two 70-year-old ladies living and dying back to back. <laughs> That's how recently <laughs> you could buy a guy. That's right. And it's not like slavery ended and then everything has been amazing. <laughs> like it just... Oh, I'm glad that's over. Oh, yeah, it just ended like a clean <laughs> where you don't have to wipe. Just boom. And then it's just been parades and presents yeah, ever yeah, since. Yeah, exactly. You got to... You gotta remember that if you meet a black person, they have gray hair, they remember a time they weren't allowed to use a certain toilet. So give them a little, you know, time to be cranky. And by the way, white people have our own thing that we, yeah. stuff that we went sure, through. Sure, sure. That, that hurt us that we have to cope with. Like when they took our slaves away. That was really <laughs> hard for us. And we're still, so it's pretty even. I mean, you didn't have, did you, you were, were you a bad kid? I wasn't a bad kid, but I got in trouble because I just was alone and I just, you know, like I got into stealing tampons at one point. <laughs> For was... profit? No, I didn't make a dime. I didn't make a dime. Well, how would this work? I hesitate yeah, to yeah, ask, but how would lady... this work? No, I was eight years old, and I just went into a CVS one day because I just roamed store aisles. And, uh, and I was at looking at the tampons, and I was sort of staring at them with this... I knew there was something dirty about them, but I didn't know what they were. <laughs> And I picked one up. I got the gall to pick one up. And I'm looking at this box of tampons. And someone came around the corner, so I put it in my jacket. And now I have stolen them. Yeah. I, because if I take them out, that someone saw that I had them in my jacket. In my head, I'm like, that's it. They're in there. I can't. So I just, I left and I had sweat on my face. And I just went home and I threw them under my bed. And I'm eating dinner. Like, everybody knows I have tampons under my bed. And so... It was a terrible, stressful experience, yeah. which I then repeated every day <laughs> for like two months. What? I'd go back and I'd just do the whole cycle. I just kept doing it. Like a and no, I never got caught. I mean, they probably saw me, but the guy's like, I'm not confronting the kid who takes the tampons. I'll pay for him out of my check before I live that moment. I'm not asking that little pervert what he's doing with this. <laughs>
Yeah, there's something wrong with that boy. Something's really wrong with him. And how did it end? Well, they kept going under my bed, and I just tried not to think about them. And then one day I looked, and they were just gone. They just were gone, and my mom never said anything. She just, she must have been cleaning up, and she was like, what the f What is this? This is crazy. Wow, that's... I don't know, maybe she used them for like 10 years. I don't know. I mean, would she throw them away? I don't know.